At what point did the did they stop gen- generating cutscenes when you failed time segments and just have the world explode? I don't know. Well, in this case, you know, once the timer runs out, the world literally does explode, so... I meant more like the generated world, but yeah. I really screwed the pooch on that one. It's a really unpleasant expression now that I think about it. I never really thought about it before. <laughs> Man, I really fucked the dog that time, didn't I? <laughs> it's almost bullet storm esque when you think about it. Ah, uh, dicks. You put the dick in the dog that time. <laughs> I'm going to try to resist the temptation to name this episode, You Put the Dick in the Dog. <laughs> Pray that I succeed. No. The timer here is actually quite reasonable if you. Yeah. If you. Seems like. So you, it. Yeah, plenty. Excuse me, sir. F coming through. And. Oh. Stink finger. And that is, uh. That is the final uh, gameplay uh, segment. We oh. are now in the ending. Wow. I got Darth Maul and a group of Juggalos doing battle. You know, Darth Maul doesn't As you really do. care for the Juggalos. Never been a fan. Uh-oh. Look who's here. I always thought that was a really cool looking symbol. Yeah. You know they're doing research on it, right? On what? On the uh, symbol on how to make it so that future generations won't Oh yeah, so that like so that like future generations won't like open like bit unwittingly open like big barrels of like smallpox and t t radioactive waste and whatnot. I just love the uh, uh, reasoning behind it cuz it's like uh, they imagine somebody walking up to it being like, oh, these people, these backwards people had no idea. It's probably just, like, full of gold. It's, there's candy! <laughs> they don't know what's dangerous. Oh, there's that DNA bomb at work. Okay, so the DNA thing ran ahead of the shockwave? I don't know. I... I'm not a DNA bombologist, I... She forgave him pretty easily. Well, I will say... Hold on a second. Sadly, we're probably never going to know, because this game, I, it's not as far as I know, getting a sequel. Shame. But that is, actually, it's not quite, but I will say, um, as regards to, <clears throat> it might, probably partly, might be because, don't forget, until like a few hours, until a few hours before that, she was working for Serrano. Mm -hmm. And if he told her to kill some dude because he's, you know, a traitor or whatever, she probably would have done it. Fair enough. So she probably, she, I think she understands just, you know, 
how manipulated Grey was. And also, she already has, like, Serrano herself is like a, you know, receptacle for all her, you know, anger over it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that that's Bulletstorm, everybody. It's quite a bit of fun. It's available on, like, PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. It's not too expensive nowadays. Now, if you like, uh, if you like a first-person shooters and you want something a little different from the usual in that genre, I would, uh, re I'd recommend checking it out. I had a good time with it. So I had a question for you, actually. Hit me. What part did you think was the most fun? Hmm. I'm not sure. I was intrigued when, uh, because it seemed, like, looking back on it, like, the time you had the most fun with it would have been, um, the Mechagodzilla thing. And I was like... Oh, Mechagodzilla! I like... Mechagodzilla's fun, but it's, um... I, it, it is really hard. I don't know. It's hard for me to say. Hmm. As, aside from that kind of dr trudgy part with the steel mill and the snipers on the waterfront, there aren't any parts I dislike, so... And there is, um, there is a little something after these credits that for us that we need to stick around for. Oh. And although, again, sadly, it is going to sort of the whole cliffhanger that's never going to be resolved. Unfortunately. Except in my fa upcoming fanfic, perhaps. <laughs> although, all the appearances by Persona characters will probably prevent that from ever being considered canonical. So. I'm sure. Okay. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed. This is one of the uh, longer let's plays we've concluded. I hope you've en hope you folks have enjoyed it. I think they have. Be sure to tell us in the comments why well, you needs. didn't enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> T tell us all. Tell us the many all the ways which we have disappointed you. Vince Russo booking my. Uh... Funeral. <laughs> Booking my funeral. That that joke kind of fell flat. I didn't like that one. <laughs> um, didn't appreciate all the foul language. Can't you? I guys... mean, I thought this was I thought this was a family bullet storm. Let's play. Can't you play a Christian game for once? <laughs> Although I, speaking speaking of family bullet storm, let's plays. This game actually does have, in addition to a, like a gore filter. And here's our voice cast. But in addition to having like a blood, you know, like a blood and gore filter. It's actually also got a uh, complete, like, an alternate dialogue track that takes out all the, like, the, you know, foul language and whatnot. Really? Yeah, and, and the thing is, the thing is, it's not just, like, it's not just bleeps, and it's not just editing in other words or whatever. Like, the actual lines, like, they're actually, like, separate, separately recorded, like, new lines for those parts. How does the characterization change with uh, foul language well, being a no-go? I'm not sure. I've... I mean, Grace. Grace. I mean, Grayson is still a drunken nut job who gets lots of people killed, and yeah, but that's what makes me curious. Yeah, I don't know. We could do let's play Bulletstorm clean version someday. <laughs> Rated E10 for fantasy violence, <laughs> comic mischief and fantasy violence. Comic mischief. Hmm. Now, I've, this was the uh, this was the PlayStation Three version that you that I that I recorded. I don't know how different if there are any significant differences between it and the 360 version or between it and the PC version. I'd imagine the PC version, with the very least, you I mean have like let you do like a higher resolution. Right. I don't really know much though about it though. Hmm. Okay. Did we not start with the different version with the PC version? No, this has been PS3 all the way through. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I think the voice work is actually really good in this game. Oh yeah, well they got a good cast. They got Stephen Bloom, Jennifer, Jennifer Hale, Shang Tsung. Right. Hmm. 
Well, I think um, a lot of the design in the game is really good. Um, it doesn't seem like there's ever a dull moment. Pretty much, no. And it seems like a lot of the game is focused on keeping the action moving forward, which is good because that's the real strength of the game. Yeah, the pace is, it's got, it keeps, it, for the most part, it keeps a pretty, you know, you know, ex, you know, exciting pace. There's always lots of stuff happening. It's good. And, and I like that, you know, they mix up the different environments. I mean, you know, you go from, you know, ruined cities to the interiors of, you know, wrecked buildings to, like, you know, wilderness to hydroelectric dams. Right. To hydroelectric dams that are phasing into other realms of space time because of a glitch that made your other your teammates disappear. <laughs> That's not in a canonical part of the game, perhaps, but I thought it was an entertaining one. How long are these credits? And did you re did you record all of them? Well, there's a thing afterwards. Oh, re re okay. We we got we have, we have to hear Sam Jackson has to come tell us about the Avengers Initiative. Sam L. Good old Sam L. Uh. So, uh, is some of this going... I assume some of this is going... No, no, this is not going to be going on the trapping floor. I don't think so. Oh, uh, okay. I'll hold my... Why, uh, why, why did, you any, did, you, did you have any, like, defamatory comments you wanted to make that weren't... No, I had an idea for a future thing. But I wasn't... I, I just wanted to talk to you and get your input on it. Okay, well, you can hit me after the credits are done. Yeah, that's okay, we'll do. And thanks for the magic of audio editing, no one heard that. Can you leave that part, though? When I talked about the magic of audio editing? Yes. Oh, I was planning to. <laughs> uh. Lots of people to thank. Oh, yes. I'm sure I already talked about this, but I'm pretty sure Cliffy B, uh, this is the game where they almost made the bar the explosive barrels green. But then people wouldn't recognize it? Yeah. Yeah, I think, that, I think you're right about that, actually. I believe I, I, believe I recall, like, an interview to that effect. I'm not sure precisely what uh, Cliffy B's uh, like level of input was. I think he was just like a, he wasn't the director, was he? No, he wasn't. That was Adrian Kamir's. It, I like I said. I, I'm sure I'm mangling the names. I I don't I don't do well with proper names that don't have consonants in them. Is the thing so <laughs> that don't have vowel. Oh well, I ruined that joke. But through the magic of audio editing, <laughs> I don't I, I don't do well with names that don't have vowels in them. In them is the thing. So like Russian names. Whoop! Something's happening here. He's awake. Not for goddamn time. What the? You get him a better pass job than mine? Fucking disgraceful! Bullshit you've done on me. Hey, sir. Jimmy, we did the best we could. Your legs were shattered. Your internal organs, well, they were caked and nothing to work with. Shut it, retard! I didn't come down <laughs> here for more excuses from your cockhole! Wake the goddamn patient! Okay. How you feeling now, Cliffy B? <laughs> you dumb bastard. Dead. 
slightly ominous. Which makes, makes it all the more disappointing that we're never going to get a Bulletstorm 2. Yeah. Mecha Ishii, Mecha Ishii versus God. <laughs> the, the showdown of a lifetime. 